Here's number six, part A. We have this beam here that's connected to this wall with a hinge. This beam is supported by a cable that runs from the edge of this beam to the wall. So it tells us a bunch of information. It tells us that the mass of this beam is 96 kilograms. It tells us the length of this beam is 2.4 meters. And it tells us the angle is 37 degrees. So I'm going to draw the forces. This beam will have gravity from the center of mass down. The force of gravity will be mg. This cable will have tension that runs all along this cable's length. I'll call this ft. I'm going to break it into its components. I'm breaking it into its y component and its x component. Since this is the angle, this will be ft cosine of theta. This will be ft sine of theta. And now we have to worry about the hinge force. Well, first we're going to decide if it's going to be right or left. We know that the forces are going to have to balance in the x. So we see that this tension has a component that goes to the left. So we know this beam is not going to get pushed into the wall. So this hinge is going to have to push to the right some amount. So we know this hinge force is going to be to the right. Now we have to decide whether it's going to be up or down. Well, let's say that this is the beam here and it's being pivoted about its center. Since mg has no radius, it's not going to provide a torque. So we just have to worry about the force of the cable and the hinge force. Well, the force of the cable is going to go straight up. This will be ft cosine theta. Now, this is going to want to rotate it that way. So we have to decide which way the hinge force has to point in order to stop this from rotating. Well, since it's going to rotate this way, a force that points up will prevent it from rotating. So we know that the hinge force is going to point up. So it's going to point up and to the right. So it looks something like this. I'm going to draw this over here. And I'm going to draw it to its components. And we also need to find this angle here. I'll call it beta. This is the force we're looking for. This will be fx. This will be fy. Now I'm going to say what's positive, what's negative. I'm going to draw a quick little diagram here. I want to say that right will be positive, that up will be positive, left and down will be negative. So I'm going to use static equilibrium to solve. So f net will equal to zero. I'll start in the x. In the x, I have ft sine of theta, which will be negative. And I have the fx from the hinge. And this will be equal to zero. So I'll have fx minus ft sine of theta is equal to zero. So I'll get fx is equal to ft sine of theta. Now in the y, I'll have ft cosine of theta, which will be positive. I'll have fy, which will be positive, and I'll have mg, which will be negative. And this will also all be equal to zero. So I'll get ft cosine of theta plus fy minus mg is equal to zero. So I'll get Fy is equal to Mg minus Ft cosine of theta. Now I want to use torque equilibrium to find Ft. If you remember, torque is equal to force times radius. Since net torque is going to be zero, we're going to add up the torques. I'll say the hinge is at the hinge of the beam. So any forces that pass through this will be zero because the radius will be zero. That leaves with the torque from mg and the torque from ft cosine theta. I'm going to say that clockwise will be positive. mg L over 2 minus ft cosine of theta times L will be equal to 0. So ft cosine of theta L will be equal to mg L over 2. The Ls will cancel, and I'm going to divide cosine theta. So both sides, I'll get ft is equal to mg over 2 cosine of theta. So I can plug that into here, and I'll get fx is equal to mg over 2. It'll be sine of theta over cosine of theta, which will become tangent theta. And fy will become mg minus mg over 2, and it'll be cosine of theta over cosine of theta, 
which will just be 1, so it'll be mg over 2. So Fy will end up being mg over 2. So now we have a term for Fy and a term for Fx. We know that the magnitude of this force will be equal to Fx squared plus Fy squared, all under square root. So the magnitude of the force will be equal to the square root of mg tangent theta over 2 squared plus mg over 2 squared. Now to find beta, we can use inverse tangent. So we'll get beta is equal to tan inverse. It'll be fy over fx. fy is mg over 2. I'm going to multiply by the inverse of fx, which will be 2 over mg tangent of theta. So the mg will cancel, the 2s will cancel, and we'll get that beta is equal to 10 inverse of 1 over tangent theta. So those are your answers for I. And now we'll go on to part B. Here's part B. This time, the beam is being supported by a cable that goes straight up. So this only has a vertical component. I'll call this FT. This beam will still have gravity. That'll be MG. And now if we decide if this hinge force is going to be up or down, I'll do the same thing I did for A. I'll pretend that the hinge is over the center of mass. So MG won't provide it to work. I'll have FT. Then we'll want to rotate this counterclockwise. So the hinge force has to be vertically upward in order to have no net work. I'll say what is positive and what is negative. I'll say right's positive, up's positive, down and left will be negative. And I'll add up my forces. Well, in the X, I have nothing. And in the Y, I'll have this hinge force, which I'll just call F. I'll have F, and I'll have FT, and I'll have negative MG. And F net will be below zero. So F plus FT minus MG will be below zero. So F will be equal to mg minus ft. Now to find ft, I'm going to use torque equilibrium. Torque net will be zero. Torque is equal to force times radius. Clockwise will be positive. So mg times L over 2 minus ft times L equal to zero. So ftl will be equal to mgl over 2 these L's will cancel. Ft will be equal to mg over 2. So F will be equal to mg minus mg over 2. So F will be equal to mg over 2. And its angle will be 90 degrees above this bar. Since we said it goes vertically upward. And that is your answer. Well, now we'll go on to part C. Here's part C. This time the beam is connected to a cable that goes up and to the right. So I'm going to draw the forces. This will be force of tension. I'm going to break it into its components. It will have a vertical and a horizontal component. Its horizontal component will be Ft sine of theta. And its vertical component will be Ft cosine of theta. This beam will have gravity, which will be mg. And now we can decide what direction the hinge force is going to point. Well, since we know that this tension is to the right, this force has to be to the left. Now we've decided whether it's going to be up or down. I'll do the same thing I did for the other problems. I'll look at the bar, pretend that the pivot is at the center of mass, and we have here Ft cosine of theta that wants to rotate this counterclockwise. So the bar has to point up to resist this, so the torques can balance. So we know it's going to be up and to the left. So it'll look like this. I'll break its components, and I'll call this angle beta. This will be the force that we're looking for. This will be Fx, and this will be Fy. Now I'm going to say what's positive and what's negative. I'll say that up and to the right are positive and then down and to the left are going to be negative. 
Now I'm going to break it up into its x and y. We know that f net is going to be 0. And x forces, we have fx, which will be negative. It will be negative fx. And we have ft sine of theta, which will be positive. So it'll be ft sine of theta minus fx is equal to 0. fx is going to equal ft sine of theta. Now in the y, we're going to have mg, which will be negative. We're going to have ft cosine of theta, which will be positive. And we'll have fy, which will also be positive. So we'll get ft cosine of theta plus fy minus mg is equal to 0. So fy will equal to mg minus ft cosine of theta. Torque net is equal to 0. Torque is equal to force times radius. I'm going to add up the torques, the hinge by the hinge, and I'll say that clockwise will be positive. So it'll be mg L over 2 minus ft cosine of theta L is equal to 0. So it'll be mg L over 2 is equal to ft cosine of theta L. The Ls will cancel. It'll be ft is equal to mg over 2 cosine of theta. I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem again. Force will equal to the square root of fx squared plus fy squared. fx will be mg over 2. Sine of theta over cosine of theta is tangent theta. So it'll be mg tangent theta over 2 squared. fy will be mg minus mg over 2. So it'll be mg over 2 squared. So that's your term for the magnitude of the force. Now for the angle, beta will be equal to tan inverse. Fy is here. It's mg over 2 divided by fx, which will be this term, which as an a is 1 over tangent theta. So beta will be the same angle as in A, but this time, instead of being up and to the right, it'll be up and to the left. So that's your final answer. Thank you for watching.